This is TQA Weekly, and today I'm going to be talking about five famous botnets that held the internet hostage. So I'm going to do something very interesting. I'm going to make the intro shorter. My name is Steve Smith, this is TQA Weekly, and today I'm going to be talking about five famous botnets that held the internet hostage. Yes. So most people don't know what botnets, but botnets are basically a, collect a collection of interconnected programs communicating with the help of a command and control center, typically IRC. Botnets are normally created through the use of malware or Trojans, viruses, whatever you want to throw as buzzword at this, and hence normally named after them. Even though the malware has multiple sources and command control centers that are not necessarily interconnected themselves. So, they're normally used to send out spam email and participate in distributed denial service attacks, but many of them actually collect personal information with the intent of fraud or personal identification theft. So I'm gonna be talking about five different botnets that took over the internet, starting with the original illegal botnet created by the spammer, notorious spammer, Con C. Smith in 2001, and no relation, and was created with the explicit purpose of sending out spam, and it was detected, in fact, by Earthlink in 2001. It was literally responsible for 25% of all the spam in that specific year, and that is the first botnet ever created slash detected on the internet. In 2008, we had the MegaD botnet, which was detected and eventually brought down by late 2009, but not before creating a network of 500,000 infected machines responsible for 30%, a 32% of all spam worldwide for that time. The suspect was arrested in relation to the botnet. For those interested in the names of the suspects, go to tqaweekly.com slash se5ep11. These are the show notes to this episode. In, let's see, 2010, we had the Zeus Trojan. Interesting fact, I got to play with this this weekend and it is actually the reason why I'm doing this episode. I came across two computers that were did not have any virus, any virus, uh, program so that's why they were infected but this specific person had the Zeus Trojan in it pre crypto locker first it's another virus with a botnet with a claim to fame to of stealing online credentials such as your bank accounts email accounts social networking and other financial institutions high level targeting pointed at Facebook Yahoo Amazon high five Metro vlogs and code net log and more and this virus could be uniquely remotely altered to allow hackers to determine which kind of information they want to extract from your own personal computer and they could even inject codes such as crypto locker which would force you to pay up otherwise all of your personal information on your computer would actually be gone by the way at the peak that it was detected in 2012 uh, 2010 excuse me it was responsible at least in the united states for 3.6 million PC infections in the United States alone. In 2013, the person was actually arrested in relation to the virus and is presumed the mastermind behind it. Then we have the Mariposa botnet discovered in December 20, 2008, injected into computers through the use of the butterfly bot virus. It was used to collect usernames and passwords to a multitude of websites, including financial institutions, and at the peak of infection had upwards of 100, uh, 1 million PCs infected with 12 million unique IP addresses. Yeah, I looked that up. It is possible to do so, even my computer does this, but I don't know how it got all the way up to 12. Anyway, in 2009, in the month of December, the botnet spontaneously dis dismantled itself before anyone can get a look at it, or at least that's what the creator thought. However, on February 3rd, 2010, the creator, Elias Net Cairo, was arrested in relation to botnet and is told to be both the creator of the virus and botnet as well as the leader of the DDP. And finally, the Kraken botnet, for which I actually have the headphones from Razer, the world's largest botnet in April of 2010. Eight, and the reason why it's last, infected 50 of the Fortune 500 companies growing beyond 
400,000 bots and is estimated to have sent out a ridiculous 9 billion spam messages per day. So some of us might have gotten emails twice that day. Designed to evade and hide from conventional antivirus software, this virus was actually such an issue that they actually had to come up with a way of removing it, obviously, and the group that removed it, Dambala, released a guide on how to remove the malware. However, upon doing so, they discovered a list of compromised IP addresses showing 495,000 computers were in fact infected with this virus. Keep in mind, attacking some of the most reputable companies in the world is a very dangerous thing that has very large repercussions in itself. So, for those that are interested, what do all these botnets have in common? Well, they collect personal information, are used to actually commit fraud, leverage fear and panic, and deploy ransom flare, flood the internet with spam, with the explicit intent of spreading viruses far and wide to widen their bots. What does this mean for you? Don't open attachments, scan everything you download, keep your virus up, antivirus up to date, and whatever you do, not because your friend just sent you an email, supposedly do you open the attachments, scan everything. These botnets leveraged your contact lists against you. So, for anybody who has any questions, comments, suggestions, you can email me at ask at tqaweekly.com. You can go and Twitter me at, at Z-E-D-A-X-I-S. You can go to my website, tkwayweekly.com. Yes, it is secure, where you can actually interact with other people on this specific episode. And of course, email me directly through the forum. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share with those that you think can benefit from this. And by the way, have a great day. Goodbye.